Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. This is a really quick theoretical lecture on high availability with Bastion hosts. Now you re may remember we talked about what a Bastion was in the VPC section of the course. Essentially, if we've got a VPC that looks like this and we want to connect into our instances that are in a private subnet, we would connect in via a bastion, uh, and then we would uh, essentially reroute traffic through our bastion to our private host. So that's all a bastion is. In this example, though, it's not highly available, and so that's what we need to look at. Um, what are the two different ways we can make our bastion host highly available. So scenario one is a really simple one. We've got two EC2 instances. So let's say we've got our instance in a private subnet. This might be our database instance. And then we have our two EC2 instances. Both are in separate availability zones. So two EC2 instances in two availability zones. And then we have a network load balancer with a static IP address. And the reason we're using a network load balancer instead of an application load balancer is when you're SSHing or RDPing in to your bastions, it's a layer four connection so you can't have a layer seven load balancer you have to have a layer four load balancer so we basically ssh in to our network load balancer on its static ip address and then it's just basically load balancing between our two different bastions in different availability zones there's going to be health checks there so if one bastion falls over it will automatically reroute traffic to our other bastion and this is pretty much what you would do in production and then our bastions would then connect into our instances inside our private subnet. So this is essentially what you would use in production. You might also have some auto scaling groups in there so that if one bastion does fail, it could be replaced uh, with another bastion. Uh, but this is typically what a production environment would look like. But network load balancers are expensive and you are running, um, you know, two different EC2 instances in two different subnets. So it is can be an, a more expensive option. If you wanted a cheaper option, you might just do this in a test and dev environment. We've got our EC2 instances in our private subnet and then we have a public subnet and we've got a bastion that sits inside a public subnet and it has an elastic IP address and then we have an auto scaling group with a minimum and maximum of one and then say you go to SSH or RDP into your bastion host uh, and then you connect into the private instance that's behind it if you happen to lose that bastion host well of course auto scaling is going to detect that and because you've got a minimum of one what auto scaling scaling is going to do is it's going to provision a bastion host in another subnet and you can actually use a user data script to take over that elastic IP address uh, and then you'll be able to SSH in into the new bastion uh, which is in a new subnet. So that is the way uh, this scenario works and it is a much cheaper uh, way of doing it um, but you will have some downtime while that bastion is provisioned in another public subnet. You also incur a little bit more downtime depending on how long your health check um, takes to you know find it that it is unhealthy so going into your exam just remember the two different scenarios for high availability with bastion hosts so you've got two hosts in two separate availability zones use a network load balancer with static IP addresses and health checks to fail over from one host to another remember that you can't use an application load balancer as it's layer 7 so you're going to need to use layer 4 so that's why we use a network load balancer remember uh, the other scenario which is where you've got one host in one availability zone behind an auto scaling group with health checks and a fixed elastic IP address and if the host fails the health check will then fail and the auto scaling group will provision a new EC2 instance in a separate availability zone and you can create a user data script to provision the same elastic IP address to the new host and this is the cheapest option but it's not 100% fault tolerant you are going to have some downtime and that's going to be the downtime that it takes for the health check to fail as well as downtime that's going to be incurred as you're provisioning your new bastion host so that is it for this lecture everyone if you have any questions please let me know if not feel free to move on to the next lecture thank you